Hey everybody, JJ with Thrive is Free. We're talking about the online qualifiers for 2017. Got a pretty interesting collection of workouts here. I'm surprised they brought back the dumbbell snatch after doing so many dumbbell snatches in the open, but um, here we have it. So I'm gonna talk about all four workouts today and I'll, I'll even talk a little bit about um, maybe which workout you might approach um, and how you might, how you might uh, uh, order them for repeats and things. But let's jump right in. So number one, we've got 100 dumbbell snatches. So the key to these 100 dumbbell snatches is pacing, right? So we, we want to use the clock to make sure that we're not going too fast in the beginning and getting blown up, um, especially if we have to do this workout again, which I, which I think a lot of people might want to try this one at least twice because of the, uh, because of the, the muscle ups at the end. And so uh, one, of the, one of the things that we learned this, this year was that uh, a lot of people actually found that they brought the dumbbell down to their shoulder before going to the floor, they, they were able to uh, um, not have their back blown up as much. And I think it's because if you go down fast and it yanks you down, it blows your back up more. So that's something to experiment with. Um, um, use lots of hip pull. Remember, it's a, it's a big hip movement, not, not so much of a press out at the top. We want to save those shoulders for the muscle ups later on. And then, uh, then we go into the, the 80 calorie row. So on this row, it's just a steady pace. It shouldn't be, a, it's not a sprint. So take most people about three to six minutes. Um, then we've got bar, 60 bar facing burpees. The key on the bar facing burpees is to save the shoulders. So try not to do a real aggressive push up if you know that your shoulders are, you need your shoulders for the muscle ups. So you wanna be able to maybe peel yourself up and then um, I like to have my hands low and then, and then have people have their hands low so that you can use a little bit more of just kind of a rocking motion to get up out of the push-up versus a strict push-up. Um, and then, you know, uh, be aware of the tiebreaker, but ultimately one more muscle-up is gonna be better than, than having a, a great tiebreaker. So if you crush yourself on the burpees, but then you get, a ter but then you get one less muscle-up, it's not worth it. Um, so, you know, be aware of the tiebreaker, but, but uh, ultimately, you know, what you wanna do is be able to finish those burpees and go right into your first set of muscle-ups. If you, if you crush the burpees and then you gotta like take 10 breaths, get some chalk and do all these things, uh, um, that's, that meant, means that you probably went too hard on the burpees. You should be able to go at least go and do one or three muscle ups right off of the, right off of the uh, muscle ups. Then, then get your chalk and do what you gotta do. So I've got some time stamps here. Oh, on the muscle ups, um, small sets for most people. Um, even if you can do you know, 8, 10, 12 muscle ups in a row, start with conservative sets because you'll be a little bit winded going through all this stuff if you did it right. And then just, and then, and, and you want to give yourself a chance to catch your breath and you just don't want to have any failed reps, right? A failed muscle up is, is just as hard as two legit muscle ups for most people. So I would definitely um, start small and see how you feel and adjust accordingly, but plan on breaking those sets up. If we look at timestamps, we've got, um, you know, about two and a half to five minutes to do the, uh, the dumbbell snatches. If you were to do, you know, 30, 33 reps a minute, that's going to be three minutes. That's, that's a pretty aggressive pace. It's about one rep every two seconds. So most people are probably going to be in that three to four minute range on that. And then we've got the 80 calorie row. If you rode one minute every 20 calories, that would be four minutes. So that puts us in that like eight minute range, uh, maybe nine minutes to get through those first two movements. The 60 burpees, um, probably 20 uh, a minute so that's going to be um, another three minutes so now we're in now you've got um, uh, we're at minute 11 or 12 and that's so that's gonna give you nine eight or nine minutes to try to finish those those muscle ups or get as many as you can right so so for the muscle ups uh, um, you know some people might do it in four or five minutes but most people it's gonna be longer anybody who wants to finish it needs to be able to do 40 muscle ups in in less than less than seven or eight minutes so if you haven't done the 30 muscle ups for time workout in like three, four, or five minutes, it, you may not finish this one. So what I recommend is doing this one conservative. Be conservative with your dumbbell snatch. You know, you know, grind out these, uh, these, these row and these burpees um, and then just see how many you get. And then the second attempt, push the pace on the snatches and then just kind of see how much extra time you can get on the muscle ups and how your shoulders are feeling um, for, that, for that second attempt. So, you know, get one on the board so that that second time you can experiment and push, you know, maybe risk a little bit more because you know you've already got one. Number two, we've got uh, 25 toes to bar. Um, you know, I, I'll post a link in the, uh, in the description of the, of the description of the, of the workout video I did for this um, back in 16 point, open 16.2. But um, small sets, a lot of people will try to do a big sets on that first round and, and, uh, you know, it's okay if you go 15, 10, or, or you know, break it up twice um, on that on that first set. But 
just to get a bank a little bit of time. But if you end up trying to do that again, and then you end up doing doubles and singles to the end because you're because you're blowing up on the second set of toes to bar, then you probably are going going too big. It's better to do small sets and small rest. Um, the reason for that is on toes to bar is that that very powerful eccentric motion tends to really blow people's grips up, um, tends to blow their abs up by doing you know even like sets of five, but you drop down, but you let go and you hit the bar and then you just drop. So you don't you don't swing back and then drop. You hit the bar and then you jump forward. You're saving yourself one of those negative reps. You're saving yourself four negatives out of that out of that set. And so as long as you don't rest a long time, you can go right into the next one. That's important. Um, on the uh, uh, you know you might also think about changing up the grip. You might go a little narrower, a little wider. You might do a mixed grip um, just so you don't tear your hands. Um, this, we don't want to tear our hands on one of these workouts because we also, we've also got chest bar pull ups. So so the double unders. You know get through the double unders. One of the things I always tell people is. If you're doing double unders and you trip up just from a mistake, that's not a license to rest. <clears throat> so a lot of people will, they'll be doing good on the double unders and they just hit their foot and then they have to reset and then it's like, okay, I'm going to rest. It's like, no, just, that was just a mess up. You're not that tired. If you're tired, then yes, you should rest. But ultimately, you should push the, push the pace a little bit, um, even if you are tired, because then just go get one squat clean done and then you can start catching your breath to get through the next set of squat cleans, whether it's the 15th, 13th, 11th, or whatever. Um, but but, but if you can bank some time on the first round or two, that's going to help you later on in the, in the 11s and the 9s with those heavier loads. Um, but ch check out that video. One thing I'll note here is too is consider singles, right? So, so the touch and go squat cleans uh, maybe on the first round for a couple sets, but ultimately fast singles on this where you're not, because what happens is on the on the touch and goes, you're gonna blow your grip up even more for, for the toes of bar and for later cleans. So you're better off just dropping, but going right on to the next one. Drop, go right on to the next one. And you'll actually won't lose a lot of time, but you're you're being a lot more efficient on that one. If you have competition plates, they don't bounce as much. So if you can use competition plates versus the, the big uh, black rubber high temp plates, those tend to bounce and you have to chase the bar a little bit. So if you if you um, if you have the uh, competition plates, that's a, that's a good option as well. As well, I just note down here, you know, bank some time. So, you know, if you can get through those first round or two with each time with less than four minutes, that'll help you on round three and four and five if you've banked up some time on that. Uh, number three, 21159 Pran. I actually made this workout. I've been doing it for about five years. Um, it, it was push presses and uh, and pull ups, but the and the weight was 135, not or excuse me, weight, the weight was 115. So if you look up on things like Beyond the Whiteboard, there's a few hundred logs at least on that one. Um, a lot of people are going to get around two minutes on this one, maybe less, because it's just the shoulder overhead can be so fast. Now, I recommend most people use a push jerk. Um, obviously, split jerks going to take too long. Push press will get hard, um, and some people will push press in the beginning, and they have trouble transitioning to the push jerk technique. So then they end up getting it gets really awkward, and they they grind out the push presses. So if you start with a push jerk, you're going to move faster through the entire the entire workout. Uh, um, and then, and then it's going to be a little easier on your shoulders for the pull-ups. Now, some people can do push presses, and that's awesome. Like th those people should definitely do that. The people who can push press this unbroken and chest bar unbroken are going to get a minute and a half, you know, minute forty on this. Um, a lot of people are going to be in that two minute to, to three minute range. It really, just depends on your on your uh, chest and bar pull-ups at that point. Um, so go for big sets on the um, on the on the shoulder overhead, uh, um, and especially on the first round. And then on round 15, you might have to break it up a little bit more because of the intensity or whatever. But, and then on the pull-ups, use smaller sets, um, again, with small rest. So, you know, don't try to do, you know, 15 and then 5 and then 1. You know, that's not, that's not ide ideal. You're better off doing smaller sets with small rest. It'll save your hands you'll, um, and it'll kind of mediate the intensity. So big sets on the shoulder overhead and smaller sets on the chest bar pull-ups. And just make sure that you're using your hips and your legs. A lot of people, when they get tired, they stop using their hips and legs to kip, and then they end up doing way too much pulling, and they're not doing enough. Um, the, the, they're not using their the rest of their body efficiently, like you should. Now, number four, this is an interesting workout. No time cap, right? So, so ultimately, the people who are going to be doing well in this workout are the ones that finish. Um, so this one is is highly dependent upon your ability to do handstand push-ups. This is a handstand push-up workout for most people. Um, so we've got 10 deadlifts, they're, they're relatively heavy, 20 deficit handstand push-ups, um, and then 30 front squats. So on the deadlifts, you know, just make sure you're going down fast or you're just doing singles. You know, don't, don't um, try to keep it slow and controlled. 
Um, just go down fast and back up. Don't bounce because that's not allowed. But uh, for a lot of people, getting through that first round fast is going to be important. So if you can do 10 or 5 and 5 or, or uh, um, you know, uh, uh, 3, you know, 3, 3, 3, 1 or whatever, however you want to split it up, um, that's going to be the, you know, get, just get through the deadlifts fast on that first round so that you can start your handstand push-ups. Now, the handstand push-ups, um, you want to start with small sets. The, the real, the most important thing here, like I wrote here, was uh, no, no reps. If you get no rep, again, it's kind of like a muscle up. If you have, even if you do a rep, but you got to really grind it out, that takes way more energy and, and delays the time you can do the next rep. And so you're better off just being conservative, you know, starting off with smaller sets, whether that's seven or five or threes or ones. Start off with small sets, but go right from the deadlift and the handstand push up. You shouldn't. Um, you should go just get that first rep done, see how you feel. Maybe crank out two or three more, and then rest, and then and then um, and then plan accordingly. Be conservative on the first round of handstand push-ups because on the second one, um, that's that's where we're going to find out where people start failing, right? So a lot of people will be able to get through the the uh, um, the first round, and then the second round they'll start doing they'll start getting no rep, no rep, no rep. If you get no rep on a handstand push-up because you can't lock it out, you know rest at least thirty seconds. I mean, be conservative. If it was too much rest, guess what? You'll be able to go faster later on. But if you do a no rep and then you step off the wall and then you go back 10 seconds later and you fail again, all of a sudden there's a risk that you may not finish this workout. So you're better off being conservative, especially if you're going to do this one multiple times. Um, the first one, just be conservative and plan on finishing. And then the second one, you can push yourself now and then you'll have the experience of knowing what this one feels like. Um, make sure you use your legs and practice the timing beforehand. So if you haven't done a lot of deficit handstand push-ups, the timing is very different than uh, with the kipping handstand push-up than is head to floor. Um, when we do head to floor, the timing is it's a, a, a kick, then a, the, the, the arms press right after. With the handstand, with the, the deficit handstand push-up, the timing is a little bit more. There's a little bit more of a delay. You'll kick and then you'll delay for a second before you start pressing with your hand. So make sure you practice that beforehand. Um, don't don't just like do two or three and be like, okay, I'm good. You know, really focus on the efficiency of it and not so much just trying to, you know, get, you know, warm up, you know, actually practice these. You may even um, practice these on, you know, tonight or Friday or, or whatever, um, a day or two before you do it, just to work on your timing and efficiency on that one. Um, the, the, the front squats, squat clean your reps to get in to, to start your sets every time. And uh, be careful in the first round. I think some people might be tent, might feel the pressure to go unbroken their first round. Um, a lot of people will be, some people will be able to do that efficiently, but it's better off, you know, you might want to do 15, you know, um, you know, 10, 5, or, 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 you know, 20, rest, and then 10, and then go. Because the goal here is to basically finish strong on that first set, but not blown up. You know, you do 20, get some chalk, 10, and then write it in the deadlifts. Don't, don't, uh, uh, you don't want to have to like finish 30, you're grinding out 27, 28, 29, 30. Now your legs are blown up, then you have to go get chalk for your deadlift and put your belt on or whatever. It's like, no, why don't you just do 20, you know, belt up, then do, uh, uh, you know, chalk up, finish 10 fast, and then go right into deadlifts with minimal rest, right? That's going to be a better option. And then that second set of handstand push-ups, again, be conservative until you see the, the goal, the, 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 you know, you see the, uh, uh, the old horse sees the barn, right? So... You know, wait until you get to like 15, 16 reps, and then you can speed up if you need to. It's always easier to speed up if you've been conservative than if you've come out hot and then now you're failing reps or you got no rep. Um, the, the, the goal for this one really, I would say, is just to not get no rep on that. So I put some timestamps on here. You know, about 10 seconds to 90 seconds on the deadlift. It's going to be a big, big range depending on your deadlift ability. A lot of people will do great with, with singles on this. Um, but if you do, you know, if you do one every every ten seconds, it's gonna be a hundred seconds. Um, so that you know, that might be kind of on the outside for some people. Um, but it, the, on the handstand push-ups, I put a question mark. I, you know, it just depends on your handstand push-up ability. But the the key is to to be deliberate and to make every rep count. If you're not sure if you're gonna make the rep, you probably shouldn't do it um, on the first round and on the first ten of the second round. Then you can try to push yourself a little bit. Um, as you again, as you get closer and closer to that finish line, um, on the on the last round of, of front squats, it should take you know a minute, minute or two, and, and um, on that one you can grind it out, right? Maybe you do thirty in a row on that one, but uh, 
um, that's it. So I, you know, for from a from a repeat standpoint and kind of an order standpoint, you know, the um, this one I would I would do first again to get conservatively to get a finish. It's going to be so much easier psychologically to have a number that you can put down, then uh, just just to, just for comfort's sake, so that you can be aggressive on the second one. If you do it and you fail. Um, that's just that much more pressure the second attempt and more stress, right? So just get one done, get a, get some points on the board, and then you can try to repeat. The second one, you can try to be more aggressive, right? So maybe you do bigger sets on the handstand push-ups, bigger sets on deadlifts, things like that. From an overall standpoint, if you're going to do, um, if you're going to do, uh, uh, depending on your strengths and weaknesses, the, the dumbbell snatch one and the, and the deadlift one, those are going to be pretty back centric, right? So if you do the dumbbell one, you might want to do it on, on Friday just to kind of, again, do it conservatively, get it on the board. Maybe you do um, and maybe you do the shoulder to overhead chest bar pull up one. Um, again, just to kind of get them, to get them checked off the list. Um, then on, on Saturday, you might try the, uh, the toes of bar uh, um, uh, double arm squat clean one, number two. Um, and then that, that'll give you a good idea. Now for the, for number four, um, you know, 10, 20 deadlifts total, even though you might have done some pretty significant squat cleans, you, sh you might be able to do that one on Saturday as well. But even if you do it on Sunday, um, uh, you could probably repeat it Monday because of the deadlifts, you know, do, as long as you didn't totally destroy yourself the first time, you could repeat. And the same thing goes, if your first attempt is, con is conservative, um, it's 40 handstand push-ups. And if you're not doing a bunch of failed reps the first time, your shoulders won't be terribly blown up. But ultimately, if this one is your main worry, if number four is one where you're like, I don't know if I can do those handstand push-ups, I would do those on Friday and uh, get it, just again, get a conservative one, get it on the board. Um, you may end up blowing up even within a conservative, what you think is conservative, so then the second attempt can be more conservative um, and things like that. So, so that would be my recommendation is either do number one or number four on Friday so you can see where you're at, um, conservative. Then, then do the uh, um, the number three, um, fit number two in on Saturday or Sunday, and uh, I think that's it, guys. This video is getting a little bit long. Good luck, congratulations for for getting to this point, and I can't wait to see some of you guys uh, make the games. Just one thing I'll say too is is uh, you guys have done the work. You know this, and you know how you approach these workouts is going to help slightly, but ultimately it's been your training up to this point. You know, taking care of yourself. You know, make sure that you're eating lots of food, getting lots of sleep this week, uh, um, this weekend, and and, uh, and don't stress. You know, do your best and, and be happy with how you performed, whether you make the games or not. It's not about, you know, it's not about just making, you know, how beating everybody. It's about learning and being a better athlete this year. You know, if, if this is the end of your, your season, that just means you're, you're getting, you get a little head start on training for next season, right? If you guys do make the games, um, congratulations, you've just, you've just won, you know, a bunch, a bunch of months more training and stress. But uh, um, that's it for today, guys. Thanks a lot and thrive on.